and welcome back. This is Luke. I am here today to talk to you about how to track things to the head in Spark AR for your Instagram effects. Uh, this is an Instagram effect that I just published a few days ago. It has uh, every element in the scene actually tracks to the face and it tracks very smoothly uh, with some drag and delay. So as I move my face around, you'll notice that everything has kind of a parallax effect. Beyond the parallax effect, one of the things I wanna talk about is how to track something to the head in a smooth manner. And that's because there's been a lot of effects. One of the ones that's very popular right now is a, uh, 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 like what house are you in Hogwarts or uh, what Disney character are you? I've noticed that those do track to your head, uh, but they do not track to your head. So I wanna to talk today about one, how to track things to your head, uh, but also how to track things smoothly to your head. I'm gonna minimize this and we are going to start completely over. And the very first thing that we're gonna do, obviously, is we're gonna be tracking our face. So I'm gonna be adding a face tracker to the scene. Remember the way that Spark works is somewhat like a folder structure. So everything that's within your scene up here, your device, your camera, your focal distance, all are children of the next thing above it. So if I collapse it, everything hides underneath it. So it all kind of works down and up as parent-children relationships do. So uh, the idea is that anything you put underneath the face tracker, like let's say this plane that I'm about to add, will track one for one directly to your face because it is a child of it. So anything I put underneath here, 3D model, a plane, um, a series of null objects that contain whatever, uh, it'll all track one for one. This doesn't track smoothly though. This doesn't have a weight to it. You know, it doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, um, smoothly uh, flowing around my head. Here's how to do it. You want to take your plane and you want to first, first mistake that a lot of people make is they try to do this and they leave their object underneath the face tracker. Now, remember, again, it's all children and parents. You want to take your plane and you want to make sure that it's not a child of the face tracker. So we're going to take that. We're just going to drag it out into the focal distance so that plane and face tracker are in the same uh level. So face tracker uh, and plane need to be still need to be tied together because as you can see, the plane is not moving with my head. Well, again, the great thing about Spark is we have this thing called the patch editor. I'm just going to go ahead and open it, which you can do up here, view, show, hide patch editor or option command P. If we have the face tracker highlighted here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag it down. My face tracker is highlighted here and all of these ports right here on the end are going to give me information about how my face is being tracked within the scene. So this is the 3D position, the 3D scale, and 3D rotation that's being passed uh, as my face moves around. In theory, that means I can take my plane, and then here are those values that my plane has. So the position of my plane right now is zero, 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 because it's right there on the middle of the screen. Well, I need to give it the same position as my face. So let's just connect these. Here's position. If you click this arrow right here, it will drop in a little yellow box and you can connect this to your 3D position. And you'll see that your plane is back there and it's being moved around, right? The thing is, it's still not smooth. It's still one for one. And also it doesn't rotate. It just stays glued to the screen. Now, this is a good technique to use already if you want something to track to your face, but not rotate, it's always face forward. This is all you have to do. You just leave your rotation at zero and it will always face the screen. But your position will still move around. It'll still move backwards and forwards in the scene. And you can see in my 3D world up here, uh, as I move backwards, the plane moves backwards, right? So everything's tracking, uh, but again, not smoothly. If we double click, we're gonna add this patch. It's called exponential smoothing right here. So if we connect our 3D position, again, the way that patch works is you connect everything here with these ports. If we connect these in between here, you'll notice that this doesn't connect into here. So it appears that exponential smoothing will not work for this. That's because this only takes one value and the 3D position is looking for three, X, Y, and Z. So if this was the X value, it would pass into this port, but then we don't pass anything for the Y and the Z. So this thing is like, nope, you can't connect this. It has to pass a value. 
So there's a way that you can build your own version of a three version of an exp three ported exponential smoothing by unpacking and packing. But I'm going to show you something cool that just came out with Spark. We're going to delete our exponential smoothing and we're going to go down here and see over here we have from AR library. We're actually just going to click this just in case you have anything in here. But we're just going to import again from the AR library. Go down here to patch assets. And if you scroll down, here it is, exponential smoothing vector three, which means it's the exponential smoothing patch, but it has three ports. So we're gonna import that for free. We're gonna go back here and there it is. So we're gonna take our patch and we're gonna drag it right into our patch editor and we can put it in line now. And you'll notice, nice and smooth. Look at that delay, it's great. So. How does that work? Well, all it's doing is it's using something called, literally called exponential smoothing. Um, but there's this feature called damping. So what damping does is it kind of adds a, a bit of a, uh, it's a waveform in a way that let's say it's a delay. So if I were to change this to a thousand and then move, it takes a little bit to catch up, right? Because it has that delay. So if I want it to go a little faster, but still be smoother, let's set it to like 100. Okay, so a little bit smoother. I'd say that's 10, sorry. <laughs> let's do 100. Yeah, there you go. So you can see the difference uh, already. Uh, so that's how you do the position. Now, again, this thing doesn't rotate, right? So all we have to do is do the exact same thing for the rotation of the plane. So here's the rotation. We're gonna take that. We're gonna click this button here. We're gonna bring the rotation down here into the patch editor. We can now take our exponential smoothing and just command C and command V, right? Copy and paste. Instead of connecting it to the 3D position, we wanna connect it to the 3D rotation and we're gonna put it here, right? And look at that. Now you got a nice smooth movement and it tracks right to your face. Now you may be asking yourself, but how do I put it up above my head? How do I put it in my forehead? And how come it's so far back? If you look in my scene, it's pretty far back there. Well, that's because of the way that scales work and you're gonna have to play with those values in order to get this box or whatever you're trying to position where you want it and then have your exponential smoothing. We're gonna take this patch, we're gonna click this button right here. And that's gonna explode it, which basically means we're gonna go into it. And you have your values. Here's your X, Y, and Z. Here's your three exponential smoothing patches that are in line. That's gonna be your X, Y, and Z value. And here it is all packed up back together again. So we will just basically wanna add values in between here. So we're gonna add. Take our exponential smoothing. Um, this is actually the X value. We don't really don't need to mess with that, but we do need to mess with the Z value. So the Z is gonna push it forward and backward, which Z is gonna be the last. You'll notice up here, if you ever get lost in what these mean, you can always reference these uh, uh, fields over here because they're always gonna be in that order, X, Y, and Z, right? They're always in that order. So easy to figure out once you keep playing with it. So let's go ahead and add that. We're gonna add this in line again. We just put it right in line and we wanna add some uh, something to this value. And I think this is gonna be 0.55 is gonna be the magic number here. I know that because I do this for a living. So 0.55, you wanna add that. 0.55 is gonna put that right on the tip of your nose, right where it should be if you had it underneath the child of the face tracker. And now we have a nice smooth box, but you'll notice if I move fast, it does have a delay to it, right? So it's not one for one, it has like a weight to it, pretty cool. So I can actually take this, and now I can move it around. I'm gonna take this, we're gonna put it right in line here. Now what this did is I added this to my Y value, and now it's floating way up above my head. I'm going to lower it, and look at that. Now I have a nice, Disney box that I can put above my head uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be glued to my head. And let's say I want to make the damping um, nice and slow. Let's make it. Let's make it like 500. Right. 
anything that you can get values out of, you can always take these values and manipulate them and connect them to values of some other object. So if you think you can tie objects to other objects if you want to, there's ways to take um, a lot of things here and tie them together in a way uh, that feels, uh, again, like the effect that I showed you before, uh, a bit parallaxy and uh, gives depth in a way that probably um, you naturally wouldn't have how do you not have the uh, ease of exponential smoothing and uh, the ability to use the patch editor to be able to do it? So, so there you go.